Hi friends, this is Sarfraz and today I'm going to show you how we can automate a mainframe application. To be very honest, I can't show you the actual demo of mainframe automation on my local machine as mainframe applications are quite costly and only big organizations can afford to bear its cost. Hence, I'm going to show you the best possible approach to automate mainframe application. So keep watching this video. Before starting mainframe automation, first of all, you have to configure the terminal emulator in UFT. Make sure you have selected the TE add-in in the add-in manager while opening UFT. Now create a GUI test in UFT and go to tools option and select GUI testing tab and then select terminal emulator option. After that, you need to select a valid vendor name as well as the emulator name. If the emulator is already installed on your machine, UFT automatically retrieves these two values. But if somehow that is not working, then you can manually select it. Now click on the validate button. If UFT is able to identify the terminal emulator, it shows OK message in green color text. Now you can proceed further. Now let me tell you about the objects in a terminal emulator application. A terminal emulator has three types of object. The first one is T window, the second one is T screen, and the third one is T field. The T screen object represents the application area of the screen that is being displayed at a particular time. By default, UFT identifies a screen object using its label property. This label property could be anything like train ID or title of the screen or the first field of the screen and under the TE screen we have TE fields. Using this label property UFT uniquely identifies our TE screen. In our normal automation approach you will have to take care of all TE screens as well as TE fields properties. The approach which I am going to show you we neither need to take care of TE screens no T fields properties. I will show it at later part of this video. Mainframe screen or T screen. Unlike web based or windows based application, we don't have to deal with lots of objects while doing mainframe automation. The mainframe automation becomes quite easy as we don't have to bother about object identification. You just need to have Good VB scripting skills. A mainframe screen is divided into 24 rows and 80 columns, and thus we have 1920 cells in our mainframe screen. The coordinate of the first cell of the screen would be 1, 1. For a human eye, the mainframe screen looks like this, but for UFT, the mainframe screen is like a grid or a two dimensional array. T screen coordinates. This is a mainframe screen. If you click anywhere on a mainframe screen, at the right bottom of the screen, it shows you the position of the cursor in terms of row and column numbers. That would be the coordinate of that character being displayed on the mainframe screen. Now we can have a look on the T window and T screen property. I will use descriptive programming approach to automate mainframe application to avoid maintenance of object repositories. So let's try to understand the basic property of TE window as well as TE screen using which UFT will identify them. The TE window can be identified using its short name and a TE screen can be identified by its label property. If you want to know more about descriptive programming, you can refer my post. I have mentioned the link in the description of this video. Let me walk you through with the most useful methods to automate a mainframe application. Although UFT has provided n number of methods to perform various operations on a terminal emulator screen, we don't need all of them. I have mentioned just five methods here. These are get text, set text, set cursor position, send key, and sync method. 
and these methods are enough to perform all sorts of required operation on a mainframe screen. The simple reason behind using these methods is that on a mainframe screen, we need to perform very limited operations. I will discuss each of the methods in detail one by one. The get text method. The parameter of this method are top row, left column, bottom row, and right column. As I said earlier, for UFT, the entire T screen is like a two dimensional array. Just to make you understand, I have created a table having four rows and ten columns. In the example one, I am retrieving values of certain characters from third row between column two to six. The output would be hello. And in the example two, I am retrieving values of entire third row and fourth row. The output would be hello A B C mainframe. The set text method. This is quite simple method. We can use the set text method to set required value to a T field by providing a starting row and column number. In the example, I am setting value test 1 to 3 at row 5 and column 6. One thing I would like to highlight that on a main frame screen, there are protected as well as unprotected fields. Protected fields are the disabled fields, we can't change their values. We can only set values in an unprotected field. If by mistake you set any value on a protected field of mainframe screen, the screen gets freezed and after that you won't be able to set any value even in the unprotected fields. To unfreeze the screen, you have to press the escape key. The set cursor position method is used to set the cursor at the desired row and column as shown in the example. Here I am setting the cursor to a position row 10 and column 5. Send key method. The send key method is used to simulate key press operations like page up, page down, escape, end key, space bar, enter, etc and function keys like F1, F2, F3, etc. In the example, I am pressing F3 key, which is usually used to exit from a mainframe screen. Sync method. This method waits until a response is received from the host and the emulator status is set to ready or until a timeout is reached before continuing with the run session. In short, it waits until the next page is loaded properly. Whenever you press the enter key, I would recommend you to use the sync method so that it gives mainframe session to process the request. Now we will see how can we write the actual UFT automation script. As I said earlier, we can automate the entire mainframe application without using any object repository just by using the five methods that we discussed earlier. To write the actual automation script for mainframe, first of all, I am creating an object of T screen. If you observe the description property for the T screen, you can notice that I have provided a generic property value label equal to dot star for label property. This helps UFT to identify all T screens irrespective of their label property. To ensure that you are on the correct screen, you can retrieve any unique text value of that T screen that never changes and put a check against it in a if condition. In the step 2, I am retrieving text from the row number 7 and in between columns 18 to 20. 4 and displaying the output in a message box. In the step 3, I am setting username and password. And in the step 4, I am pressing enter key. Creating custom get text function. In mainframe automation, we rarely need to retrieve text values from multiple rows. 
Usually we have to validate values of a field in one particular row. Since the getTeXt method requires four parameters, we can create our own custom function, say getVal, with only three parameters, wherein we will pass only one value for row parameter along with start and end column values. Automating ISPF screens. The example I discussed was the fix online screens. The best part is that using the five methods that we discussed earlier, you can automate ISPF screens as well. You can validate datasets whether it is a PS file, VZM, or a GDG file, or any file. You can also validate datasets using copybooks. Since dataset validation is not a common thing, hence I am not discussing that in detail. If anyone is having questions, please mention it in your comment. That's it. Hope you have enjoyed this video.